how do you catch this the start of a trend? So one component of that would be so if we're using you know say say like in the in the case of this ADX VMA right, which is this indicator is trying to identify trends here. So it turns blue or turns red. If you're trying to catch the first bar right when this indicator turns blue or the first bar when it turns red right that's kind of one of the components of this broad question here that Theodore has so let's well uh, yeah so we'll show how to do that um, and I'm just going to show briefly for now because we've actually I've actually answered this one in a previous workshop in in, in, in more detail so I'm going to take kind of the shorter version you know, for now. All right, so let me switch over to the logic tab here so we can start working on the logic board. So, uh, yeah, the first thing I'm going to need is a solver that identifies, right, when the ADX VMA is in this long trend or when it's in this downtrend here. So and let's place a little arrow here. So let's see. So we want to get a signal right when the indicator first turns blue or get a signal when the indicator first turns red. All right, so let's build. So again, uh, I'm going to use a threshold solver again like I did earlier. But this threshold solver is going to be a little different because this time, right, we're trying to identify just the trend um, not the neutral area. So let's plug the indicator in here. So we're using lizard indicators, um, ADX VMA. So there we go. And I'm just using the default settings of an eight period. <clears throat> and we're going to be using the trend. So this data series trend. So let's select that. Okay, so when that trend data series, when it goes positive, it's going to be greater than zero. So we're going to use the greater than A, right? And there we go. So we've identified, right? So this solver, I you know, identifies the long trend. And for the short output, when, right? So when the indicator is red, it's going to give you that trend data series trend is going to be a negative one, which is less than zero. So we're going to use the less than E. There we go. <clears throat> All right. So if we have, you know, basically, you know, if we, if we built a logic, you know, say like you've got a more complex set of logic and it gives you something like this, where you have a bunch of long signals or a bunch of short signals here, you know, how do you, you know, how do you clean all these long signals up so that you just get the first, uh, the start of that? There's a couple of ways that we could identify the first bar. One way is we could use um, the signal blocker here. We could use the signal blocker. That's basically its, its sole purpose is to allow the signal of the first bar through and then it blocks all the rest of the signals but for this yeah in this situation you know for me i kind of think the signal blocker is a little overkill um, so i like to take a simpler approach here and just use um, some boolean logic here so what i'm going to do so again i'm giving you guys the short version i'm not going to go into great details explaining all this because there is a a previous workshop video on how to do this here. But, so I'm just going to give you the, oh, actually that's the wrong solver, sorry. I wanted to grab a look back solver here. And I'm going to set that there. And what I'm using is the displacement function. So let me rename this here just so I know that what I'm actually using in this look back is the displacement with a value of one. And then I need a XOR node. So this gets into basically Boolean logic. 
And if I connect that in, if we take a look at the chart, let's stretch this out a little bit, right? We can see it identifies the first signal. Nice, right? Blocks all the rest. But then when the trend ends, it gives us this another long signal at the end of the trend, um, right? Same thing with the downtrend. So this little short downtrend, we got a short signal. And then when the downtrend ended, it gave us another short signal. So we need to get rid of that. And to do that, we're going to use another AND node. So we'll stretch this out a little bit. So we're going to feed that into this AND node like that and like that. And there, you can see I got rid of that last long signal and I got rid of this last short signal here and now it just gives us the very first signal of the trend right so there you go so um, all right you know so there's kind of two ways to do it you can use boolean logic here um, or you can use a, a, a signal blocker here so that's the there you go Theodore so that's the short version of one of the components of her question so I look I look forward to your email for next week and we'll yeah kind of go through a, a handful of you know the various components of or I should say the various subsets of Theodore's longer question.